and if the parent the parents seem to have, to have a belief system, but they're not trans, transferring that belief system to their children, and what hard work means, and and what the uh, ramifications are for not working, uh, you know, hard in your life. Um, my parents came here from Europe. They both had to go through the process uh, of becoming citizens and work hard very much towards that. My mom couldn't speak English. My dad barely spoke English. You know, the bottom line is that they worked hard to make themselves a living in this country. I myself went to college, paid for most of my own education, had student loan debt, et cetera, et cetera, paid my debt off working three jobs over the course of time. Um, you know, so, I mean, hard work is not something that's instilled in kids today. They all, like you said, have this sense of entitlement. And it's- Sal, Sal, when, when you're... Um, I guess they'd be your stepsons. When, when they, you say they get changed and they don't think anything of it and they drop it on the ground, do you say anything? Do you say, hey, you know, I used to have a piggy bank and you put your change in the piggy bank and then you, you know, roll it up. Do you say anything or do you feel that's not your place to say anything? Well, I tell them, I said, do you, you know, if you don't respect the penny, you're not going to respect the dollar. <laughs> this is... This is an issue, I said, if you, know, if you don't understand what the value of that penny is, you'll never understand the value of more money, and therefore it'll slip, slip between your fingers. And as you get older, you're going to start wasting more and more money, and you're going to start seeing that you're not going to have anything in your life because you didn't earn it. It didn't come, it didn't, it didn't come hard to you. Well, what do they say to that, Sal? What do they say to that, or are they too young? Wildly, like, you know, what are you talking about? They have no idea. <laughs> they, they, they just can't grasp, put their hands around the concept. They just yeah. don't understand. Thank, thank you for the call, Sal. I mean, like many of you, I mean, I hit a piggy bank, and then you put all your spare change in there, and then when there's something coming up, you get out the rolls, and you're rolling pennies, and then you're rolling dimes and nickels, and I, um, I, I like that. That's a very easy uh, story that the kids, they think nothing and just throw the spare change on, on, <laughs> on the ground. one 855 Four hundred savage. You talk about entitlement. Wait till I tell you the story about some illegal aliens. One eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. This is John DePietro sitting in for Doctor Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. I think it's an issue that we should discuss. I think we should discuss it. Every time you use the word draft, people get a misunderstanding about what you're talking about. Um, but. I have supported women in every role in the military, including commander in chief. And uh, I, uh, but it, I, I think it's an important issue for us to discuss. It is uh, the public opinion on it is uh, it really, I think, thirsty for more information as to what that would mean. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. That is the voice of Nancy Pelosi. She thinks it's an important issue to discuss. But first, we have to straighten out the presidency before we can expect to have the type of armed services that the country deserves. Don't you agree? I mean, for her to be talking about women being drafted, there's got to be an argument. There's got to be some angle behind that of which she uh, is trying to put forth. Before we go back to your phone calls, I did mention the entitlement, the area of entitlement And I received an email, and I've been going back and forth with this person, and they don't want me to use their name, which I'll respect, and they don't want me to use their town, which is fine. But I will tell you that it's a town in Texas, and this is someone that thinks it's wrong, that apparently they have a a little league field, and the little league field has been ruined, and they can't play. They're expecting uh, tryouts and spring baseball coming up. Apparently, illegal aliens that live in the area have been using the baseball field for soccer. And basically, even though there's signs that say you're not supposed to use it for that, basically destroying the baseball field and the grass on the baseball field. So the person's emailing me saying, you know, should I say something? I think it's unfair. We have to cancel the baseball little league season. Cause I, and I'm going to tell you, what I, I, I emailed like th- those, whoever was involved in the, I don't care if they're kids here illegally, find a translator, tell them they are expected to come up with some fertilizer, repair the damage to the baseball field, and don't cancel the little league season because a group of illegal aliens have damaged the little league field by playing soccer. See, this is what no one speaks up and says anything. Number one, they shouldn't even be here. Number two, never mind. Now they're destroying the little league field by playing soccer on the grass. No, you have to say something or find a translator. But I know I wouldn't let it go by the boards. Of course, they should repair it. Tell them, hustle up, get some grass seed and repair the damage. 
Let's go back to your phone call. Sign six. John is listening on WABC in New York City, and John's up on the Savage Nation. Hello, John. Hi, I was listening to the topic of entitlement. We live in a nation of single-parent families where mom is running the show, and mom gets the check with the courts and everything else that's going on like that. And these kids don't have role models. We have so many people, if you look at our jails, if you look at our institutions, if you look at all the problems we have, it all goes to third wave feminism. It all goes, it all goes to the dismantlement of, of the family unit. And it's all connected with socialism. And, and I was reading how Bernie Sanders does well with women. Better than Hillary, for fact. Because I think that maybe perhaps they look at Bernie Sanders as a surrogate father. Would you agree? No, I, I wouldn't agree. I mean, I think, thank you for the call, John. I, I, that's an easy way to dismiss it, but the sense of entitlement comes from one parent households to the children. Uh, it, I think it'd be easier to solve if that were the case. I think a lot of it has to come, or, and it does come from the people in office, from the leaders, whether it be the president or others, and certainly like a, uh, like a um, Bernie Sanders that continues to preach. You know, when you start talking about college is free and don't pay back the college loans and we should wipe out the college loans and everything is your fault and, you know, health care and everything else should be free, of course it's going to become a, a sense of entitlement. 1-855-400-SAVAGE if you'd like to call into the program. 1-855-400-7282. John DePietro sitting in on the Savage Nation. And my view is that, yes, people have a right to be angry. You have a right to be angry when uh, we are the only major country on earth that doesn't provide paid family and medical leave. Uh, When we have more people living in poverty today than almost any time in the history of this country. People have a right to be angry. But what we need to be is rational in figuring out how we address the problems and not simply scapegoating minorities. That's Bernie Sanders. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Don't worry. Michael will be back tomorrow. In the meantime, you're welcome to call the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. And also visit the website, which is michaelsavage.com, where you can also find out about Dr. Savage's new book, Diseases Without Borders. I'm going to talk about that coming up. I mean, that that is a major concern, what is happening right now. And also, follow Dr. Savage on Facebook, the Facebook page. Just click the like button. Is Michael Savage on Facebook? And follow the program on Twitter at A Savage Nation on Twitter. Out to the phones, line two. Steve is listening on WJR. Steve, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation, Steve. Hey, John, how are you? Very well, Steve. Go right ahead. Yeah, I would like to address uh, tax revenue. I had a 25-year printing business, 17 payments left on my home. Uh, I got sick. I couldn't afford health insurance anymore. I lost everything, my two retirements, everything. But anyhow, the 99 uh, or the 1%, they say, makes uh, 99% of the income. And they make most of that money through debt. And I've heard that they they pay 67% of the tax. Well, if they're making 99% of the income, why shouldn't they pay 99% of the tax? Well, you know, there's a lot there, Steve. And and we could even do a full program on the, the tax code. Uh, we should have I, I'm in favor and I think Ted Cruz has a, a good policy on a flat tax uh, we, thank you for the call Steve we, we don't need this whole business with the IRS and the, even the, the number of corporations and the way that the loopholes and people skating on paying taxes or coming up with creative ways there, there has to be an easier and a better way to do it that would be fair across the board you can't throw it all just on one group, but the way the tax structure, can't we all agree? I mean, that is something that hopefully a new president, whether it be a President Trump or President Cruz, but a new president to bring in, 
because I, I don't know of any – I mean, is there anyone that likes the system that we have right now, the way the IRS is, the amount that people have to pay in taxes? You can't listen to a, a Bernie Sanders. His plan would be, what, 75% taxes? Some people pay even, pay even higher than that? I mean, that certainly – is is not the answer. Line one is Dan, and he's listing on WJ uh, JRW. Dan, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Dan. Yeah, um, uh, President Obama's success. I believe uh, he's been a great success as a president. In 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 terms of what? What would you list as his top three successes? Because Dan, I I think the people. I know, would disagree with you. That's why people are so angry. That's why Hillary is getting pummeled right now. But what, just in no particular order, what would be his three big successes? No, I didn't say I agreed with that success. When he ran for office, he said, ran for office, he said he would fundamentally change this country, and that he has. Now, if Bernie becomes president, then that's going to make his presidency even more of a huge success. That's just going to usher in socialism. He's going to say, I don't want Obamacare. We want a one-payer tax system. Everyone's going to say, yeah. And what did, what did uh, President Obama say when he was a senator? He wanted a one-payer system. And he said it would take a while to get there, and he's almost there. I disagree well, with it, but you got to say He's done what he said he was going to do. <laughs> That's one way. Thank you, Dan. That's one way to look at it. I don't know if anyone would would say that it, it, he's transformed it in a in a positive way or in the right direction. But they, if they, the goal to just transform uh, and change the country and the direction for what it is, don't you find? I find that's the biggest one of the biggest complaints. That, that people have is just it's it's the direction of the country and people wake up and say and and that's where I think Trump has been so successful is being plugged into people saying you know what what's happened you know we we don't make anything anymore we're not feared around the world anymore and and Trump is right we are getting ripped off by China by Mexico uh, just the actions of Putin or some of the other countries would they really have done this in the past, I, I don't think they would have done this in the past. Let's go to line six. Rodney is listening to the Savage Nation on KLIF. Rodney, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Rodney. Hello. Thanks for having me on. You know, Very welcome. I'm a teacher and, and an author, and I actually wrote a, a recent novel about this entitlement thing. You know, and it seems to me, as, as I look at my class and my students, what we're dealing with is just generations of kids who have been neglected by their parents, not, not having meaningful relationships with their parents. And the parents, to make up for the guilt, have been giving them things to solve their own consciences. And, you know, when you do that, you engender a uh, entitlement mentality. So the, and the kids don't really appreciate what's given to them, but they just start to expect to, to be given things, and it's a vicious cycle. So we've come to this point where we, we have to see, well, how do we reverse this? It's got to get back to the family having real relationships, talking about the meaning of hard work and, and the like. But it, it really takes a cultural change. Uh, it's so much be the catalyst for that. But I see a lot of just guilt from the parents' side. When do you think that, that started? Rodney, and what do you think the causes are? Do you think it's it starts with children being put in daycare? Do you think it's because of the the amount of divorce? What, what do you where, where did or just where do you think or less children? So where, where do you think this started? Or where does it come from? Well, I I think I'd have to agree with Dr. James Dobson on one thing when he talks about the two career family. I think. When you started with a two-career family, like in the 70s, I think it was, when it started to boom, and then the and then the ensuing divorce problem, which started uh, kind of booming in the 70s, y- you start to see things go downhill rapidly. Then, and I, but I would I would start with a two-career family. It's just mm. you know it, 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 the fabric of the family it becomes under strain and stress, and then you, you look for ways out and not enough time together. Things like that. That's what I would point to. And you know, and as I teach my my kids in my school. You know, seventy percent of the African American community, seventy percent of them don't even have fathers. You know, and so the whole fa- the whole fabric has been come loose. But there's still this entitlement thing, growing at the same time. Uh, so it's 
it's a generation that really has to make a turnaround. Thank, thank